What's going on guys? Hope everyone's having a great Easter. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Bobolot Pure Aero VS. So first let's talk specs. Racket comes in on strong at 305 grams. Racket head size is 98 square inches and the string pattern comes in at 1620. Balance on strong is 9 points head light. Now, another thing that should be mentioned is what Babala was going for when they made this racket. So, as you may know, the racket is based off of the iconic Pure Arrow. However, it kind of strives for a little more control. So they did this by, if you compare it, the Pure Arrow is 100 square inches. This one's 98, so it's a little smaller head size. Pure Arrow is 1619 string pattern, this one's 1620. And it, it lowers the launch angle and adds a little more control. And you will feel this, in my experience. Especially if you're like me and you played with the Pure Arrow, you tried it, but it was just too launchy. This racket is completely different. It's nothing like the Pure Arrow. So I'm going to be critiquing this racket based on five criteria. Feel, control, ground strokes, volleys, and just general power. So getting started with the feel... The racket feels very whippy and modern, with a crisp explosion when you hit the ball. I say the whippy part because the, the racket, it has like the pure aero beam, so it still flies very aerodynamically, especially with like a top spin swing path. Sometimes a little too much for me. You'll see me shank a few balls into the air here, but it helps. It's um, the crispness. It's not as stiff as it says it is on like Tennis Warehouse, It unless you have terrible arm problems. So overall, on the on the feel side of things, I'll give it a 7 out of 10 because I just feel like you can't get to the feel of the older rackets. Like a small head size when you hit it right will always feel better. But for a 98, it feels pretty damn good. So next up, let's talk control. My opinion, Babala did and didn't achieve this. On the topspin forehand and backhand, marvelous control the ball just arcs in it's the racket i mean it's built for topspin however on certain slices or touch shots i found the racket a tad powerful where the ball would kind of float out occasionally but then again it could also just be that a shitter so <laughs> the thing that i really wanted to mention about this racket on the control side is just the ability to vary your topspin is it's truly remarkable like if you have an opponent who can't handle low kind of flat balls you can do that with this racket if they can't handle a, a whippy forehand that goes bounces really high you can do that on this racket so i really have to give bubble lot props when it comes to controlling what kind of a shot you put out this racket is excellent and it's for that reason i'm giving it an 8.5 out of 10 on the control side next up is uh ground strokes i already talked about touched on this briefly but the ground strokes feel powerful controlled and just really strong it's really tailored to like the kind of modern player who likes to sit at the baseline although it's not limited to i found that i actually come to the net a lot with this racket but back to ground strokes off the backhand wing for the one-handed backhand i played it a little bit it feels really nice because the arrow beam, you, you can like really windshield wipe the ball, a lot of topspin, arc in balls that maybe just shouldn't go in. On the forehand side, it's just, it's it's really good. It's confidence. It's confidence in a racket that you need. So for that, I'm going to give it like a 9.5 out of 10 on the ground strokes. Now, next up, we're going to talk volleys. This part of the racket really like impressed me i'm not gonna lie i was expecting with the slices to sometimes float that the, the volleys just wouldn't be good but i found myself coming to the net a lot more than i usually do because the feel it just worked it was addicting and it it sliced the ball the ball died down it was very easy to punch volley and so, honestly, I'm, I'm surprised I'm saying this from a Bobolot racket, right? It's meant, it's just meant for, like, ground stroke, baseline play. But I'm giving the volleys a 9.5 out of 10. One thing I forgot to say on the volleys was the power of the ground stroke pairs really well with someone who can take advantage of a short ball. 
because of the, the heavy top spin that you can produce from like a heavy forehand or a backhand on this racket, if you hit a ball near the baseline, the person generally has to back up a little bit. They give you a short ball. So the combination of the ground strokes really helps you approach the net and get aggressive just because of the, the nature of the racket. And then once you like there, it's just really easy to finish off the point. And then for the last criteria, just overall power. I felt that it was good. It wasn't overbearing, but you really have to strive to get over the ball to control it. Otherwise, it can fly. So you can't just, it's not meant for pushers. It can work, but it's just not ideal for this racket. So on the overall power, I would give it on like a power index, honestly, like a six out of 10. But the way the power works, like a nine out of 10, like the power, it just, it makes sense. It works. And then before I talk about my final thoughts on the racket and who I think it would suit best, it's worth mentioning. I modified the racket a little bit. I added two grams of lead at 12 o'clock and I played with an overgrip. I added the lead at the top just because I felt like the swing weight, I don't know. I, I, I like having a heftier swing weight. I'm a big guy, I'm like 200 pounds, six foot two-ish. So I, I like a lot of power. However, I do wanna make the distinction between power that can be controlled and just like overall power. So like the, the pure arrow I found was stiff where the ball kind of shot off it. I'm talking about the power where it absorbs the ball, kind of pockets a little bit and then rebounds. And so what it does when, it, when you add the weight at the top of the racket, say at 12, it kind of, it almost helps you get that natural swing path because you just kind of let the weight take over. You don't really force it as much. So you're playing more fluidly, I find. So we're getting close to the end here. Um, my final thoughts on the racket. I like it a lot. I might even buy a second one. It's much better than the Pure Arrow, in my opinion. Then again, it could also be because I'm a larger guy. I need a little less power as I can generate on myself. This racket I would recommend to intermediate to advanced. Advanced players can really take advantage of like the varying spins and depths that they can add on this. They'll also benefit from being able to hone in that extra power with the, the spin, you know? It's a modern player, so someone who likes to stick on the baseline but can take advantage of short balls. That's who I'd recommend this racket to. Overall, I'm gonna give the racket review at uh, 8.7 out of 10. It's a very good racket, very good racket. Um, before I finish, something worth mentioning. Just a few ATP pros who use this racket. Among the most famous, probably Carlos Alcaraz at the moment, up and coming. Then Felix Oje Eliassim also uses this racket. Thank you for watching. If you've played with this racket, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Any feedback on my review is greatly needed. And if you want to see more reviews, please leave a like and let me know.